What's going on everybody? It's Rocco with Rocco's Modern Survival. Uh, I am back again with another video from last week um, about a kind of a follow-up from last week's video as you as you could say. the uh, This one is all about profitable farming or profitable fish from your aquaponic systems. All right. Now the biggest thing with the way the world is going right now and everything is you want to make sure you're sort of sustainable, you're family is taken care of and the, in the long run you can actually make a profit whenever the, everything's done and if you hear anything in the background it's my son Rocco Jr. playing with his friends on PlayStation they're playing Fortnite so yeah but the biggest thing that I wanted to bring to you guys was the seven most profitable fish for aquaponics I want to give you all the info you're going to need for them I'm going to need give you the uh, stuff that you can do with them and the pH balances that you want to keep everything at all right, and that was my cell phone. I'm sorry about that. So let's get into this and learn a few things, and I hope you enjoy and have some fun. All right, let's get into this. All right, so the best fish, best seven fish and crustaceans for your aquaponics system and for profit is so number one, bass. Um, they, for one, they taste amazing, uh, and you can sell them for meat. All right, whenever they get to two to four pounds is the optimal time to start advertising to sell them. And then as they get bigger, you can add, you know, you can add on to the uh, price of the meat. So right there, boom, profitable. Um, also, they breed between 55 and 65 degrees water temperature. If you, once they get to spawning age, if you can keep your water temperature from 55 to 65 degrees, they should produce multiple amounts of eggs alright um, multiple amounts of eggs uh, we'll say that alright <laughs> they'll just produce a massive amount of eggs there you go that's the one I was wanting to use um, for one you want to keep your pH balance for them from 6 to 8 most of the um, aquatic animals that you have 6 to 8 is the optimal pH balance that you want to keep also, it's also really good for your plants if you want to keep it from 6 to 8. All right, and a good way to keep your pH balance uh, from 6 to 8 is um, you can use eggshells and you can use oyster shells. I use oyster shells in mine, or you can just get oysters, I guess, in the cells, but I just use oyster shells, crushed up oyster cell shells, sorry, um, and you can use limes. Uh, if to raise or lower. Okay, now there's a uh, the straw hat farmer is a good guy to go check out if you want to learn how to keep your pH balance just right with him. Uh, he's taught me how to do it, and I think he could really teach you how to do a lot of good things with, with your pH balance. Um, the next fish that we want to get into is bluegill. For one, bluegill can be eight from six to eight ounces. Anything higher than that is good. Most bluegill are only going to get six to eight ounces. There are some rare occasions where bluegill get massively big. Um, that's really lucky. Bluegill can also lay eggs from 10,000 to 60,000 eggs. That's a lot of eggs. 60,000 eggs is a lot of eggs. Now, just like bluegill, bass, anything that you have, once the, um, and I should have mentioned this with the bass, make sure for everything you have, all the animals you have, make sure there are some gravel on the bottom of your pool um, or pond or what, or mud or whatever. If you have a pool, or if you have a pond, it's going to be mud most likely. But make sure that there is something that the fish can spawn with. They can make a bed with. You know what I mean? They need to be able to uh, basically move the rocks around, sit themselves down, and spawn in that area. So they're going to have to have rocks to spawn with. Now, once they spawn once they successfully spawn, remove the eggs, put them into a separate pool, let them develop, and let them grow, all right? And then once they've grown to a decent size where they won't get ate by the other fish, and if you keep your fish fed properly, yes, they shouldn't get ate, but it can happen, and you don't want to lose that product. So remove them. When they get big enough, put them back into that pool. Or you can keep a separate pool just for them so they uh, can rate to grow out and just to sell them. All right. Now, for one thing with bluegill is, for one, yes, you can sell them as bait. Um, they breed between 60 and 80 degrees, 
and just like everything else, keep the pH balance from six to eight. All right, and yes, I, you are seeing all of this on screen as I'm talking as well, but I just want to make sure that you all understand what I'm saying about all the stuff, all the animals I'm talking about. Everything that we're talking about, yes, you can sell and you can make your profit back. And that's what the biggest thing here is what we're trying to do is make a profit on the farm and raise animals that make us happy. The next fish that we can uh, sell on the farm is, is catfish. Catfish, for one, taste really good. They taste great, okay? Um, you can sell their meat and they get very big as well. And they help clean your tank. All right, they're bottom feeders. You can keep them in a tank with the bluegill if you want to. Um, normally I'd keep them by themselves because they can't eat the bluegill. Uh, they breed between 68 and 75 degrees. So once they get to spawning age, keep your water temperature and your pH balance from 6 to 8. But keep your water temperature from 68 to 78 degrees. Or 75 degrees, I'm sorry, 75 degrees. Um, just like everything else, make sure you have the gravel at the bottom, all right, so they can, for one, feed off everything, and it collects all that, that good stuff down there that they like to eat. Um, but, you know, like I said, everything else, make sure they have the gravel so they can make their beds, all right? And the biggest thing is resell, <laughs> my kid, uh, reselling that meat for however much you want to say, like, go, go to a restaurant, all right, order catfish, see how much that sucker's going to cost you. It's going to cost a lot of money. And that's, who knows, that's frozen fish. This is fresh fish right out of the freaking pool, pond, or whatever you're using, all right? I don't know about you, but I love fresh fish. All right, so the next fish that we are going to use or talk about is going to be goldfish. Sorry, there's a little pause there. A uh, goldfish is, for one, you can sell those to pet stores, you can sell them to anyone around the area that is just looking for fish, and you can sell them for bait. They are really good for bass bait and for catfish, uh, for muskie and for uh, pike and for gar. So they're really good for all those, all right? And yeah, if one gets off into a, a river or something, they get massively big. We've all seen those pictures. Uh, they're real. Those fish are huge. But yeah, a goldfish, they grow the size of their tanks. So that's one thing about those. They can get really big. Um, they, they release a lot of ammonia, um, which can be very good for a lot of plants as well. All right? So the next one we're going to talk about is koi. Koi, for one, from what I understand, they taste good. I've never ate a koi. I kind of want to try koi just because I've heard they taste good. Um, they grow very large, and they, yeah, they grow huge. The, um, mm, excuse me, sorry. To make a profit on them is one, you can sell their meat. Also, you can sell them to pet stores. You can sell them for, uh, to restaurants, like Chinese restaurants love putting koi's in their little ponds right there. Uh, you can sell them to other fish lovers, other people looking to buy koi. Koi are very expensive, too. Like, if you can get cheap koi, get cheap koi. Um... Or get them when they're cheap. Let's just put them. Get cheap koi, but get them when they're cheap, um, because you can sell them for an astronomical amount of money, and they can live in a very wide range of high water temperatures. All right. um, the next one we're going to go over is trout. That's what we're going to go over next. All right. The biggest thing with them is they need a ton of oxygen in their water. All right. You can resell them for their meat, and they need a constant water flow. You cannot forget that. Okay. They need to have a pump in their water, pushing the water along, kind of giving them a current to swim with, and a couple air bubblers, air bubblers, there we go, down in the water to keep that water just oxygenated, oxygenated, there we go, as much as possible. All right, and if whenever you're filtering that water out and it's coming back in, that's really good for um, bubbles as well, it's good for oxygen as well, but trust me, they're going to need more. All right, I've tried it with trout before, and if I would have known what I know now, they would still be alive. I didn't have enough oxygen in the water, and I didn't have enough current in the water. I had my um, I had my filter coming in, and I had bubbles going in. I had I had what I thought was enough oxygen going in, but it wasn't, um, and I didn't have enough current. 
I did not have the water flow in there that I needed to have. But, like I said, you live, you learn, and that's why I know what I know now. So, like I said, trout, amazing. Um, if you can grow them the right way, though, okay? Crawdads, river lobsters. That's the next one we're going to talk about. Um, river lobsters, or crayfish, mud slickers, mud dogs, mud puppies, whatever you want to call them. Uh, they're the last, but not least, to be featured in this video. Um, the biggest thing with them is they clean the bottom of your tank, and they are amazing for that. But, uh, one thing with them, they have to have a ton of oxygen, just like trout. They have to have a ton of oxygen in the, um, in the tank, or they will drown. Um, if you want, if you want to just strictly raise mud puppies, or, um, river lobsters, however you want to call it, crawdads, if you want to raise them just by themselves, that's a good idea. The water doesn't have to be super high, and if you can, give them something to climb out on. Um, unless, if, unless you're going to keep that oxygen really, really high. Alright? Their pH balance is going to be 6 to 8 as well. Everything in this system, as I've been talking about, pH balance 6 to 8. Alright? That's, that's the sweet spot. That's where we want to keep it at. Um, their resale value is amazing for bait, for food, uh, for pets. Alright? Some people like having crawdads for pets. I don't know why. But everything in here, you can be sold for pets, except for trout you know, or catfish. I wouldn't sell them for pets. Um, but the koi, bass, I wouldn't even sell them for pets. Yeah. The ones I've said for pets, sell them for pets. Goldfish and koi, and what else have I said? And that's about it, right? And the crawdads, yeah. Those three right there, that's what I'd sell for pets. Yeah. Um, so if you want to, and the, the biggest thing with them is their eggs, cool. is they lay a ton of eggs at one time. And they lay about springtime. Their water temperature needs to be yeah. from, I think, 45 to 65. I will have that information right here for you as soon as I get it. So it won't. this video will not be going up without the right information on. Um, it's been a while since I've dealt with crawfish, so I kind of forget. So um, I hope you all enjoyed the video. I hope you learned a little something. And I hope you come back for more. All right? So like always, have a good day, God bless, and keep safe in this pandemic. Uh, stay home, okay? Don't go visit your family just because you want to, because we just had a case up the road, literally like a mile up the road from us. This uh, woman came in from Ohio and visited her two elderly parents in their 70s, and they're sick as all get out, and now they have the coronavirus, and they may not make it through this now because she just wanted to come in and visit. You don't just come in to visit someone because you don't know if you have it or not. All right? That's just it. You don't know if you... We could have it. We don't even know it. Um, as far as we know, we don't have it. But you could be carrying it and you wouldn't even know it. And then you're going to bring it to someone else and it's just going to keep passing around. Stay home. Um, so that's enough of the rant. I just, common sense really irritates me when people don't have it. Um, so like always, God bless, and have a wonderful day, and please like and subscribe, and come back for more.